how do we objectively measure some of these symptoms? Most of these are uh, highly subjective. And so my research is really trying to look at objective ways of monitoring this and trying to give that information to doctors so that they can help people who are electrically sensitive. When um, the more people I talk to who are electrically sensitive, very often they tell me that they're very uh, responsive to fluorescent light bulbs, the tube fluorescent and the compact fluorescent. And so we began to do a study to find out what do these light bulbs emit. And this is an example of an incandescent light bulb. Everything in red uh, shows you the uh, energy coming along the wire. Everything in blue tells you the frequencies that are coming through the air. And what you can see here is a nice 60 cycle frequency which represents our electricity. And you can see that this line is not perfectly uh, flat or straight or clean. It's got a few little spikes on it. Now, whether this incandescent light bulb is on or off, we get exactly the same pattern. So this light is not contributing to this power quality or to radiation coming through the air. This is simply what's present in that room at that time. This is just one of several uh, compact fluorescent light bulbs that we tested. And you can see there's these high frequencies on the wire, and there's these high frequencies coming through the air as well. A few um, months ago, there was a television program in Toronto called 16 by 9, and they did a documentary on light bulbs. And this is an example of a woman who happened to have lupus, um, and she happens to be extremely sensitive to uh, these compact fluorescent light bulbs. She spent 20 minutes in front of a light bulb, and this is what happened to her skin. She went to her dermatologist, and he couldn't figure out what was wrong with her. Eventually, uh, her skin cleared up, and then she realized it was simply uh, whenever she used a light bulb, her skin would break out in this illness. And skin problems is one of the leading causes uh, or symptoms associated with uh, use of fluorescent light bulbs. There are three groups in the United Kingdom who have come out against these compact fluorescent light bulbs. One is the British Dermatological Association, for obvious reasons. But people with migraines also suffer, and people with epilepsy also suffer. And so migraine action and epilepsy action are trying to convince the UK government not to ban incandescent light bulbs so that their members can continue using them. What about diabetes? Well, I started to work with people who are diabetic. And um, this is a woman that we worked with uh, in New York. She's 57 years old. She's a type 2 diabetic. And she controls her blood sugar through exercise. And this is her blood sugar on three consecutive days in gray. Um, and it, I have the, we use a different unit in Canada, but I have the units here for, for those of you who recognize um, the levels of blood sugar in diabetics. But basically what this is showing is the, the level of her blood sugar dropped from about 200 down to about 125 uh, after exercising, going for a walk outside after about 20 minutes. And this is on a different day. Her levels were higher. She had a headache. She wasn't feeling well. She walked for 20 minutes, and her levels of, of blood sugar came down. And each time, they come down to approximately the same level. Sometimes she didn't feel like walking outside and she would exercise on a treadmill. And this is what happened when she exercised on a treadmill. This is her starting level. Instead of it going down, it actually went up. Every single time it went up, she's electrically sensitive. And so when your doctor tells you, well, get some exercise, and people who are diabetic and electrically sensitive, when they get exercise where they're exposed to a variable speed motor, which is what a treadmill is, produces dirty electricity, and that's what they're sensitive to. So they're reacting in a very negative way. We think that this can actually be used as a diagnostic for doctors um, who have patients who are diabetic to see if they're electrically sensitive. This is another example of a woman. She's um, in her 80s, and she has type 1 diabetes, had most of, it, most of her life. She takes medication twice a day, first thing in the morning and just before dinner. Um, and this was the level of dirty electricity in her house, and uh, an electrician went in and cleaned it up. So um, we just wanted to find out what would happen to her blood sugar. So she volunteered to give us her blood sugar readings first thing in the morning called fasting plasma glucose levels. And the levels um, before the filters were installed were 173. The levels that are considered um, um, non-diabetic in the morning is, is 126. So if you have levels above 126, you have a potential problem with uh, regulating your blood sugar. So for a week, her levels on average were 173 before the filters went in, before we cleaned up the power quality, and they, they dropped to 119. That's actually below, that's a non-diabetic level. 
Now we're not saying she's not diabetic, we're saying that her, her blood sugar was actually exacerbated by the dirty electricity in her home. During that period, she reduced her insulin uh, level from 36 units a day down to 9 units a day. We shared some of this information with the American Diabetes Association and they didn't want to know anything about it. They're just not interested. They're making too much money selling the strips to measure your blood sugar and the medication to control it. We also work with people who have multiple sclerosis. And this is an example uh, of a young man. He has primary progressive MS. Um, he has difficulty walking. He was actually fired from his job because they thought he was um, uh, on drugs because he would slur his speech, he, he would stumble periodically, he would swagger when he walked, and it really looked like he was on some sort of um, medication. We measured the dirty electricity in his home. The levels went up to about 410. And we, we filtered it, we cleaned it up, and got the levels below 40. And then um, I asked him if he would simply walk so I could record his, his, his ability to walk uh, unassisted. And this is what he did. So this is the way he would normally uh, walk when he wasn't using his, uh, his cane. And you can see that his parents have, he's moved back home. His parents installed um, uh, a rail for him to hold on to in the event uh, that he loses his balance. Four days after we installed the filters, I got a phone call from him and I found out that he was feeling a lot better. Two weeks later, I went back to his home and we recorded it again. It doesn't look like the same person anymore. So we were actually able to make changes in his um, uh, the symptoms of his multiple sclerosis. This is another woman. This happened so often that I began to videotape them. So he wasn't the first one that we had success with. He was about the fourth or fifth one. And I kept thinking, no one's going to believe me that someone with MS can benefit so quickly. This is another person. Levels in her home of dirty power were extremely high, and that came from a plasma television set um, that we know is normally quite bad. And this is... Um, um, with her, she had difficulty with her hands, controlling her hands. Uh, her mother lives with her and feeds her because you can see here that she can't feed herself. And I just asked her to hold her hands as still as possible so that we could record uh, the amount of uh, shaking. And this is six weeks later when we terminated the study.